need that little sip of coffee before we start, you know what I'm saying? Black coffee. The only way jazz musicians are allowed to take their coffee. Well guys, I got another lesson for you today. This time we're gonna be talking about some augmented lines from one of my favorite modern jazz guitarists, Jonathan Kreisberg. Most of these lines come from an album that I've been really enjoying, and this is Dr. Lonnie Smith's album, All In My Mind. Um, got this vinyl recently from Blue Note. Um, unfortunately, Dr. Lonnie Smith had recently passed. Um, so we're going to honor that and check out some of uh, Kreisberg's best lines on the tune Juju by Wayne Shorter. Um, now this is a tune that Kreisberg's also played on some of his own recordings. And so it's interesting to see his take now with Dr. Lonnie Smith. And we're going to be looking at mostly lines from this album and then also one line, which is one of my favorite lines that he's played from one of his previous recordings of Juju. All right, so we will get into it. As usual, I have a PDF download for you guys. This one's a free PDF download with the lines. Um, and so we'll go through these and talk about some of the concepts. All right, now I'm calling these augmented lines. Some of them you could think of as whole tone. Um, some of them are really just chromatic lines, but the whole basis is around this kind of augmented sound. So we're, we're playing Juju, so this is in 3-4, and we're, we're mostly playing over this B7 sharp 5, B7 augmented sound, right? B augmented. And so we have B, D sharp, G, right? And we won't get too much into all of the theory with augmented. We're just going to be looking at lines from Kreisberg today. Um, and so the first one we're going to start off with is his opening line on this solo. And so it's a really cool one. He, he starts off and he's like... Now the line continues. I'm, I'm breaking up the phrase just so we can look at each concept. So this first one... And just as a disclaimer, this is how I find um, the lines to be played best. This is not necessarily how Jonathan Kreisberg plays them. If he's watching this video, feel free to comment below. Um, and actually, as a reminder, if you guys haven't checked out my previous interview with Jonathan Kreisberg, you guys can check that out right above. All right, so this first one, we're thinking of it based around this augmented, right? So you have B, D sharp, G, B. And so that is where the pattern is centered around. So we approach the D sharp, start on the G, go chromatic, and then A. And then it goes chromatic down to the B. So when you're thinking of this line, I want you to see the shape of D sharp, G, and B. Right, and then he's doing again. And then it goes to B. And this, like I said, this line does continue. Which leads us into our second line concept. And that is just playing through the actual B augmented triad. So in this case, it's B, G, D sharp, B. And he has this really cool, um, he's implementing this, uh, it's like a connective tissue line, which if you've seen some of my previous videos, you'll recognize that one all the great jazz guitarists use that in addition to a bunch of other jazz legends. Um, but it's a great way of connecting between different shapes, right? So B, G, and B flat, G flat, and then that leads to our next augmented shape. So right, so that's a great little lick you guys can implement um, to connect any of these augmented ideas. And then the broad concept here on the second line is just using these big augmented shapes, right? For B augmented, A, G. So in this case, he's treating it more like a whole tone type of sound where he's moving this shape in whole steps and then back up and then resolving on the D natural when it goes to the B flat um, in Juju. So um, going from the previous line, we have walking up and then going up in whole step. So hopefully you guys see that concept. And I'd encourage you to use this on whatever song you're practicing that has a dominant seven chord. Try implementing some of these 
augmented ideas, right? So, you know, if your song has B flat seven, you might just move this idea, start on B flat, and move that in whole steps, right? Or G, you could do the same line we just did. Um, so apply it to whatever you're currently working on. It doesn't have to be juju from what you're learning. All right, so then after that, we have this other really cool one, um, and it's this chromatic line where he's going. All right, now this one's pretty specific because we want to make sure we are using, um, at least in the picking that I'm using, um, we start on an up pick, and then it's all alternate picking from there. So up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. It leaves us with an up, and then down, up, down, up, and that restarts the pattern. And again, even though this is fully chromatic, the shape we end up creating is D sharp, B, G, D sharp, and then we'll, we'll resolve on B flat. But the augmented shape is here. And then that's the next start, B, G, D sharp. And then again, he's ending on B flat since that's where the chord's going. Uh, so that's a really cool one. Again, you can use, I think of this as starting on the third of the dominant chord, right? So if I want to do this in a different spot, like say we're on C7 altered or C, C augmented, I would start on E natural. And you could always do just sections of it. It doesn't have to be the full line in what you're implementing. So I'd break, break the lick down in a few different phrases. Even just this is a cool way of using that little fragment of chromaticism. Um, to do this properly, what I'm doing is, I told you about the picking, we're starting with the up pick. I start with the first finger and then shift up. And then you're back. So you wanna shift with that first finger and not with the pinky. You don't wanna go. Shifting with the pinky is a bit slower than um, using your first finger and pivoting off the thumb. For our fourth line, we have this other really cool one using a four note pattern that he's cycling. And four note patterns usually sound pretty good in a three, four segment because you get this hemiola, you get this rhythmic displacement from the uh, even note pattern over an odd time signature. So that usually ends up being pretty cool. Um, this one, he's starting on B. And it's like a third with that little chromatic moving down again in whole steps. And then ending again on B flat, so. Right, so again, this little fragment, I would take this fragment and then start playing around with your own ideas with that. So you have, you could move it up like we did before and then resolve it. And this is, in my opinion, what Kreisberg's doing here. He's worked out a lot of these great ideas, these great little um, fundamental units around this augmented scale. Um, and then he can start playing around with them. So he can improvise based on concepts that he's really worked out, lines that he's really worked out, and then go from there. All right, so for our last one, it's this one from his previous recording of Juju. Um, it's one of my favorites. It has a pretty specific picking. You're going to have to do a couple up sweeps and we're gonna to have to turn our wrist a little bit to, to do that. Um, and it has a similar shape to this other one we did where we were using the augmented triads, right? So we'll start it right here on this B augmented triad. And this time we're going to be doing triplets. So he's going, and it's down, hammer on, down for the picking, and then up, up, up. And what that requires is you're gonna to have to turn your wrist this way. So if you're normally slanting your pick downward, you're gonna to have to slant it the other way. And then we're moving that, so it's triplet, triplet, right? Triplet, triplet. You could move the accents around on this. It doesn't have to be accented on the downbeat. Um, that also works. And then we shift this pattern. So we're thinking of this pattern and moving that again in whole steps. So starting on G, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, and you can resolve whenever that makes sense in the song you're playing. 
it's a really cool one. I've used this on rhythm changes before on those sections where the bridge section where you have a lot of dominant chords. Um, it's a really great one to just like build up um, some tension, like really build up and move up higher or lower on the guitar neck. It's one of my favorites. So definitely check this out. You guys can get the free PDF download for this in the description below. If you guys have any comments, please let me know. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.